Here we are then, episode number two, and we're already cracking out the rare roller coasters for this Blackpool Pleasure Beach copycat park. Either times are hard or effort is high, but spoiler alert, this turns out amazingly. Oh, welcome back to Beachy Point, you guys. Thanks for coming along. This is our South End meets Blackpool Pleasure Beach style park here in Planet Coaster. And do you remember the last episode when I was like, oh, I've done loads of stuff for the next episode, but I need to stop? That's this stuff in the background here. We'll talk about that in a moment. But guys, I still love how this park is coming along. Like, it's just, ah, oh, it's amazing. If you missed it last week, this is what we did. Tickets and the turnstile uh, area with the arcade. We did a gift shop down this side. And then we added in a Rudy to ride. Hooray! Who doesn't love to ride a Good Woody. <laughs> <laughs> but this is what we got this week then it is an SNS free fly and I love these coasters they're just so much fun to do they're frustrating as hell though they're an absolute ass to do but I I like this layout I've ended up like really quite liking it it's uh it, it's doing well so let's have a look at the uh, the layout then so we've got the station we come into the first turnaround here, and uh, I've actually decided to use um, uh, drive tyres on this one. I know that the real life Tranon doesn't, uh, but I've uh, various reasons why. Uh, and then you've got the lift hill. It's set to, I think, uh, 25 degrees, and it's quite slow, actually, because these things are quite slow. But you then come around into the first turnaround, and then you go into what we would call an inversion, but it's not an inversion because you don't actually invert, uh, but it, it's basically a way of swapping the sides that the seats are on uh, and then it comes around to this turnaround and into a into a bit of a, a drip a drop uh, and then it comes into the turnaround here where it turns back around on itself to right itself for the brake run and then it does the final part of the course where it comes underneath the lift hill up and over the brake run and then it does this weird bit at the back here because by now you've petered off a lot of the speed so uh, you are able to do these twists and turns the the track and the coaster can cope with this in terms of forces because it's not traveling very fast uh, and I I, yeah, I dig it. And by the way, this whole idea of not tipping the bucket is absolutely bollocks when you know how gravity and g-forces work. If you've got enough force going around the corner to pin people into their seats, then you can tip the bucket. So you can save those comments if you like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then elsewhere, uh, oh, uh, you're probably wondering what this is all about, by the way, and that's because it's a wing coaster, it has to have dual loading stations, so because I'm working with a really short space, I don't have the luxury of just being able to throw down a station and deal with the, the parting situation later, so what I've had to do here is make sure that I've got space for the uh, station platform, I've got an exit strategy, which is the blue, and a queue line strategy for the white, of course, completely unusable, but it's it's needed, and then of course I've got the queue line and stuff down this way to do, and then elsewhere, where we've got uh, a couple of these rides down here so we've got the the plane ride and we've got the elixir machine uh, and then we've also got ourselves a chair swing up here i did go for that by the way uh, we'll talk about more uh, we'll talk more about that in the next update so let's actually show you something developed shall we i'll see you in a minute so you soldier on and you plow through and you end up with a mess <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's the middle part of the episode. You guys know what that means. I'm going to show you around something that's not quite finished. And you're going to sit there and wonder why I even bothered. But, hey, it's a lot of work that's gone into this. And I'm really, really chuffed with how this is coming together. Like, this coaster in the middle, it's gone through many, many, many personalities. This is just its most recent iteration of a personality. I think I want to change the color back to this yellow rather than the brown. But it's fine. I'll deal with that later. That's tomorrow me's problem. For the time being, though, there's a lot of work that's happened on this coaster. It's fully covered custom supported now and uh, yeah this was a bit of a hostage situation but it was also a little bit fun to do because I had to uh, literally play the game let the coaster run a couple of meters pause it put the support in and then run it pause it run it pause it so I know that all the supports are pretty much there there's some really really close calls like the envelope is literally zero <laughs> but nonetheless it's all Good. And in fact, you've actually got a couple of collision points along the track here, like this bit here. Um, it's a collision point because you've don't you don't have enough room to put a train underneath the over the top bit, right? There's a couple of areas like that, and that's fine because computers and, and sensors and stuff would deal with all of that in real life. Make sure there wouldn't be any risk of a collision. Like for example, this block break here wouldn't let the train go if it's not here. So therefore, this isn't actually a collision risk. All that usual stuff kicks in. But yeah, the supports actually look pretty decent. The station as well has 
come to life. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with it. I don't want it to be themed. Remember, it needs to be stylized rather than themed. Um, and I'm and I'm liking it. Like this whole exposed beams, and then you've got the walkways and stuff uh, are all are all in. I haven't done the station bit here yet, right? Because I don't really know what I'm going to use for all of the, the fences for the air gates and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's all in anyway because the queue line attaches itself from here, and you come up this way along this way and down here. And of course, it's never going to be used. It will never be used because it's just not possible. <laughs> but then the exit comes this way, and then it comes up at the top, and then it meets with the other exit path here and comes down. So it's as realistic as you're probably going to get. Like I say, I still need to do all of the station clutter and stuff inside there. It hasn't had any of its um, its electronics and stuff put in yet. <laughs> He's staring at me, and it's making me feel a bit uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> what I have done though is I've put the concrete base down uh, so that it's like a walking area and, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, it's it's all right. If you look at the roof from up here, it's also decent. Hang a couple of lights off and you'll be uh, you'll be absolutely fine. I also decided that I wanted to have the walkway looking into the station rather than out, you know, like having a wall and stuff. So. That, that's pulled off quite nicely and I also decided as well that I wanted the iron girdering uh, rather than wood beams because when I was putting this in it was originally wood and it started to feel a bit themed don't want it to be themed I want it to be stylized so yes uh, this by the way in case you're wondering is going to be a solid building that's why the fencing and stuff doesn't go along here but I have just put some decorative fencing you don't need don't die fencing here uh, because you're able to cut off the rest of the ride area along this way so you're not actually having too much of a problem plus I'm going to put some flowers and stuff in here so you do have a natural barrier and it means that uh, you're not going to really jump the fence but the fence is actually a meter and a half high I think it is so it's pretty decent it's pretty decent actually it's nearly 1.7 meters isn't it if you look at the adults uh, so yeah it's it's pretty decent you've got enough clearance and stuff to actually get around there so yeah I like it right it's, it's coming together these two rides then there's nothing there's nothing really much to tell you about these uh, I love the fact that this this pad for the plane ride I can't remember what it's called um, air race isn't it something like that I love how, how like versatile the pad is because the guests don't actually use it all, right? So you can put flowers and you can put foliage and stuff in here to bring it to life a little bit. So it's not just a concrete pad. So that's what I'm doing. Just put a bit of mulch down, a few uh, barriers in or curbs in so that you can uh, have planters and stuff. And then you'll be good. You'll be good to go. Over here, it's just a simple, uh, if you excuse the shadows, I don't know if you can see it very well. Uh, it's just a simple out and back queue. And then I just put mulch around just so I can put the uh, path cover and stuff down and that that will complete uh, that will complete that area and then it's all uh, it's all good so then when we come to the central focal thing there you go there it is I mean it's a mess at the moment and it needs so much love but it's actually all right it's um better than I thought it was going to be shall we say uh, I was I'm struggling with it I didn't really know how I was gonna make it do its thing but actually it works. It's round enough from the... It looks a bit squished, doesn't it, from the top? But <laughs> it's round enough from the top. The um, the path covers and stuff are going to bring this to life, right? So it's going to hide all of these gaps and stuff. And it's going to uniform... Uh, unify... No, what am I trying to say? It's, it's going to make all the pathing uniform up here. So it, it'll be it'll be good. Uh, it's likewise down here. That will also take care of that. And then inside, uh, we've just got wood along the uh, along the walls. And then you've just got the exit and the entrance either side. And then, of course, as you've already seen, the entrance and exit uh, is here. Now, what I have done is already is I've started to put the brick into uh, the line. So it now actually follows the process. It follows right the way through. Uh, it goes into uh, into there. So I just need signage and that sort of stuff uh, in that bit. In fact, it needs so much work. <laughs> like, I just, oh, I just don't want to do it. But it's gonna. It'll be. It'll be fine. It'll all come together. Uh, and then outside here, I have just started to put like a rough idea of planters and that sort of stuff uh, around. So there's going to be trees and whatever just to bring the area to life a little bit. I do want to put picnic benches and stuff around here. This feels like it would be a bit of a congregation area. Uh, it's the central focal point of the park really isn't it it's just outside the entrance area this would be like the the main thing of the park of the past uh, and then these planters and stuff going in i haven't forgotten toilets by the way uh cha -cha toilets are uh, here but i'm not doing these this episode um i've got plans for what's going to come in this area here 
then the toilets and then something along here as well it's going to feel like it feels like there needs to be shops and stuff so that's a tomorrow that's a tomorrow episode uh the last thing to show you by the way on here is just the maintenance area for the coaster because i didn't really talk about it um it's a really really close maintenance area it's it's fine in terms of clearance you'll get it in there but there's no uh, there's no cover i don't think i want a cover um i don't think i can put a cover on it because i just don't have the clearance for the pillars and stuff so <laughs> i think unfortunately whoever's going to work on this ride is going to be subjected to the full force of the british uh, seaside british weather <laughs> but it's a transfer track there you go transfer track and if you look down here i've tried to make it as real and as close to uh, the real life sns free spin free fly whatever they're called uh this is pretty much what um the real one looks like so i just need to put some electronics and stuff in there just to bring it uh, bring it to life but it fits right and it's compact and the access point is here and you have just enough room to get a van through here if the ride isn't running which is fine remember our principles from jippity point a small park will make use of as much of the space as they possibly can so they wouldn't have the luxury of having dedicated roads and like separate areas for this they would just have underneath drive the van through it's probably dirt and stuff which is what i'm representing here this would be like a central maintenance area so you'd have clutter and stuff in here and then you've got access to the uh, to the brake run along this way so you're all good uh, if you needed to get a crane in you probably could you'd park it sort of here and you'd have a long armed crane and it would come through this way and then it would lift it out so you do have passive access it does uh, it does exist but yeah this is how it's looking let's just go up here right this is how it's looking it's coming together quite nicely the sight line from here it's actually pretty decent like i'm happy with it i didn't know if this was going to work because of the two buildings but actually they don't compete with each other and i'm i'm all right with that so i'm going to carry on because i want to get this done see you in a minute well what do you know about that it's a fine how do you do this has come together so well and i don't even know how it's happened i also don't know how or why but this is now my new favorite view of any of the coasters i think i've ever done in any park it's just absolutely beautiful i've been i've been talking to poetry slam 78 about this and i think or we think that it's something to do with the fibonacci sequence it's just got something going on in there there will be a science as to why this looks good but her feedback was that the colors are great the tone is great and the scale is great so thanks hunt i'll take it <laughs> and i mean i absolutely love it even down to like this bit down here this has come together so 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 well too and we'll we'll look through that in a moment there is just one thing that's bugging me though and i think it's because i need to do this bit back here this area here feels like it's one tree away from greatness but as you can see by the the ride itself placing that tree is difficult because if you put it here you you obscure the view of the ride and you can't put it here because of the the actual ride path itself so but it feels like it needs a tree here and i don't know if that's just because that's my muscle memory and stuff kicking in uh whatever we'll 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 see but anyway here's firebird i've called it firebird so this does have a name sorry guys you can't name this one but you can name the woody from last week crack on with uh, crack on with that but there's the station and i love how this is like open when i was building it i was like oh this feels a bit tall and it feels a bit open and it feels a bit ugh. But actually, these um, pathing, path this path and stuff actually encloses it slightly, so it's all good. It's, it's still not going to be protected from the British weather, but hey, whatever. <laughs> uh, inside here, um, the station is all done, so I've kitted it out with all the usual stuff. It's got baggage bays and, and whatever. And yes, there is actually TMTK available. I didn't realise I, I had it downloaded. I think I've used it before, but I don't actually use it that often. That you can create your own batching gates. So there you go. And then My Curious Mind have got these as well. They're actually he's he's done it, and um, they're actually animatable. But I've decided not to. The uh, positioning and stuff is slightly obscure slightly wonky but it's fine they don't have to be perfectly symmetrical it's just represented i mean it's not even usable so why are we fighting about it <laughs> but i love the balconies and stuff in here i think they just it it just creates the wall for the building without actually needing a wall and of course you've got all the lights and stuff in here so as i said before it's a floodlit park so you don't have decorative lighting and themed lighting and stuff is stylized so you have flood lighting and, and whatever going on in here so yeah that's the station and i absolutely love it queue line then has come together quite nicely too it's not a massive queue line it does what it needs to do remember this isn't going to be a busy park like thought park or alton towers i mean i know blackpool gets busy but we don't need the sort of queue lines that they they have and then inside the ride area i've just 
I didn't want it to be overgrown. I wanted it to be kept, but I didn't want it to be brand new. So I've put some overgrowth uh, in here. Uh, just added in, in some trees and whatever and just gave it a bit of life. Maintenance area then has had stuff done to it. I've kind of tried to hide the stuff where I can underneath catwalks and whatever. I mean, the park would still make an effort, but... It's going to be difficult to hide a lot of the stuff, so um, that's what you've got here. And like this area here, it's just, it's just gross, but it's it's gross by design. Uh, this is where the all the electrics and stuff would be kept for this uh, for this ride, right? So it it needs to be there. And there's no other place that you can put it. But just the fact that it's become a bit of a dumping ground in the middle of the ride area, I put ah, oh, it's perfect. I love it. Um, and then of course you've got all the decorative fencing and stuff along here. I haven't done around the back here because I am priming myself to use. Uh, to use this parcel of land in the future, especially if the series is a, is a massive success. We've got this expansion pro uh, plot here, so we've got an entrance portal that we could do here. So I've left that. Uh, I've left that for now. Um, but yeah, this is the this is the coaster. The supports as well absolutely pop off, and I've now put all of the the shoes as they're called. Um, in all of the places that I want the footers, uh, I want the supports to have shoes. And let's be honest, if this is any other park, this is going to be a Valair, right? <laughs> so the fact that we just one step up kind of helps that uh, helps that anyway. And then over this way with the chair swing, ah, uh, oh, yeah, this just came together like. I love it. I love it. I mean, the uh, the the actual path covers do make it clip a little bit, but it's fine because that's. It's fine. <laughs> I, I like it. And the building itself, I decided to keep it low key. I did have all of these visions of there being like these really small, beautiful, intricate details to this. And maybe it's a bit Victorian. And you know, like how I did the um, the ballroom on Shorehaven Pier. I wanted something similar to that originally. But actually, as I was doing it, and this Art deco -y kind of style came about, this low effort Art Deco came about. I was like, do you know what? This works. So I kept it like that. I decided not to do all the intricate details. I hope you agree. Um, but yeah, it's it's all good. And this ice cream place. Oh, I love this ice cream place. I just wanted this shop that's underneath everything that's away from the whole scene of the of the park. And it just works. Like, yes. Yes, 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 yes. It's a grab and go unit. It wouldn't be a sit-in restaurant or anything, but you do have sit-in stuff. So if you go inside here. Here's the design of the inside. Simple. And I didn't want to do the whole counter and stuff because I wanted it to be functional. So that's why we've got the two here. So it works with the space that you've the space that you've got. I really hope that if we've got a Planet Coaster 2 coming that we get the same uh, shop stuff as we've got in Zoo now. You know, the, um, the, the non four box whatever. The counter only. There you go, because uh, we had it in Roller Coaster Tycoon Three, and that was one of the one of the main assets. This back end here, by the way, I've just started to toy around with some stuff. I need to find a strategy of uh, this brickwork being different, um, and I started to put this pad down. I designed this pad here, right, as a as a as a patterned texture. There is a ride here, and I don't know if I'm going to use it here um, or what I'm going to put here, but I do need to find something to tidy that up. But down this way, uh, I've now done all of the pathing and stuff, and it's now like in a swoopy, wavy style pattern and I've thrown around some uh, picnic tables and stuff for now uh, and then of course that you've got the original entrance that leads up to the chair swing and it just looks great like yes you can just see that this would have been the crowning attraction of whatever this was maybe it was a park before maybe it was something and this is the crowning attraction of that it just frames it absolutely perfectly and I am so 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 here for it um then over this way so what i've done here is i've just put in some like covers over the um uh, over the the games units and stuff remember this is like a seaside park so blackpool literally monetizes as as much of the park as possible everywhere you look there's games everywhere you look there's some kind of spending opportunity and that's what i'm trying to achieve here i think i'm kind of missing the missing the trick at the moment like blackpool would probably have games all along here and stuff all along here and whatever so I'm sort of like getting the vibe for it. Uh, that's why I added this unit here, right? Uh, so it's a completely different games unit to the one that we've got bef uh, from the other side of the area. Uh, and it's just another monetizing opportunity, but it also frames off the queue of the um, of, of the flying ride here. So I'm, I'm here for it, like it's all right. And I think, I think I'm either gonna put a, um, a flower bed in here or it might be another building just to close it off, uh, close it off slightly. Uh, but I have also just done this here for now. Um, 
I, it's not staying, it's just for me to get a feel for how the, the area is going to flow into the next area. I think in the next episode I might move these or get rid of them completely. But it just, like I say, it just gives me a, a feel for how the flowers and stuff need to be in this area. And how it's uh, around this ride. You've got all the, the hedges and, and stuff. It needs tidying up, right? When I do whatever's coming in this area here, this bit with this uh, elixir is going to get tidied up and, and stuff. So uh, it's, all, uh, it's all good. Like That's why these don't have ride signs and stuff yet. Because I don't know what. I want this to look like so uh, but yeah that's the elixir machine the queue line itself is, isn't isn't going to move that's I'm happy with that and the flowers and stuff I'm, I'm happy with I just need to stylize it a little bit uh, a little bit more so yeah this is how it is all looking guys thank you so much for getting to the end of the episode you know what to do if you like it leave a like subscribe whatever we're I'm loving this park like I didn't I got I had no inspiration going into this at all and I'm so glad that you're coming along for the ride uh, next week I think I am going to develop this area but I don't know what's there yet I've actually got four rides that could fit into this into this space so I think I'm going to even surprise myself um let's go on a ride on this monstrosity the not volaire <laughs> <laughs> but I'll see you next week. Have a good one, guys. Take care. Bye!